Hello, writers, and welcome to our third session in our animal research unit. Informational writers start with a strong table of contents. So I want to start by taking a look at a table of contents that should be familiar to you. This was our mentor text back a couple units ago when we did informational choice writing. So this was from Melissa Stewart, Deadliest Animals. What do we know? about a table of contents. How do they help readers? And another thought, how do they help the writers? Those are some questions we are going to tackle today. So this is what you need to know, writers. Information writers must make plans for how to organize their information writing. Writers make a plan and divide that plan into smaller parts called subtopics. And these subtopics can be your chapters in a table of contents. So the table of contents helps your reader know where to find information, and it helps you plan and organize as a writer. So let me show you. Here is my potential list of chapters for my All About Penguins book. Chapter one, what penguins eat. Chapter two, penguin bodies. Chapter three, how penguins protect themselves, and chapter four, a penguin's life cycle. So if you're stuck too on how to think of subtopics, I really want you to think of the work that we have been doing in Read Aloud and Readers Workshop. We've been talking about some different subtopics in our Read Alouds, and during research, Readers Workshop, you've been filling out your research round one book. So think about those topics that you have been looking up in Readers Workshop. That's the research you're doing. That should be what guides your chapter choices. So could we make this any more exciting? It's think back to our work in our last informational unit. Like this is pretty boring. What penguins eat, penguin bodies, how penguins protect themselves, the penguins life cycle. And think about the work we, we've been doing in our read aloud. Some of those chapter titles are pretty exciting. I'm going to give you a moment just to think if you can come up to make any of these chapter titles more exciting. All right, go ahead and whisper out something you think we could call chapter one. Chapter two. Chapter three. Chapter four. Those are awesome. So here's one I made a little bit stronger. So chapter one, it all starts with an egg. So I went from what penguins eat to it all starts with an egg. So not only did I come up with a stronger title for my chapters, I reorganized them a bit too. Because if you think back to our work in our previous unit, we want to make sure the order of our chapters makes sense. Flip, flop, flippers, time to eat, and staying safe. So it all starts with an egg would have been a penguin's life cycle. Flip, flop, flippers, penguin bodies. Time to eat, what penguins eat. And staying safe a penguin's life cycle. So I came up with more exciting names and I put them in an order I feel that makes more sense. I'm gonna tell you about their life cycle, what they look like, what they eat, and how they stay safe. So just a few things to remember from our previous work. A strong table of contents must have a logical structure. So it might go from least important to most important, first to last, parts, types, reasons. There's no right or wrong answer there, but you should be able to explain why you put them in the order you did. They should contain chapters of almost equal weight and importance. So remember, when we did our work in our previous unit, you don't want a chapter that's only going to end up being one or two sentences, while another chapter is 10 pages long. You want to try to balance the information in your chapters. It should cover the whole topic, and you don't want to repeat information included in other chapters. So with my penguins, if I have a chapter that talks about what their bodies look like, 
I'm going to include information about their feet in that chapter. I'm not going to have a whole separate chapter where I talk about their feet again. So your job today, I can draft a table of contents. I know I'm successful when I consider subtopics for my topic. I organize subtopics into a table of contents and I create exciting chapter titles. So let's take a look at where you're going to do this information. You're going to open up this template today and you and all of your group members are going to be in the same template. So right in the front, it says animal name. You can click there and type the name of your animal. And then as you go through the slides, you're going to see there's a slide for group member A, B, C, D, and E. You might have two group members. You might have five group members. So there's enough for up to five in this. You'll decide with your group members who's A, B, C, D, E quickly. You'll click and type your name on your slide. And then you're going to come up with chapters you think should be in your group book. But you're only going to create enough chapters for the amount of group members that you have. So if you only have three group members, you only need three chapters. This is just set up for if you have up to five members. So that's the first part of what you're going to do. Then you're going to, after we spend some time doing that for mid-workshop, you're going to compare your table of contents to the table of contents that your classmates have made. Then you need to figure out together how you can combine your ideas into a group table of contents. So it's important that you're fair, you're comp you compromise, and you work together. So we'll give you a little bit of time to work on that. And then you will find on the last slide, you have a spot to put your final table of contents. And then you're going to pick which chapter everyone is going to write. All right, writers, off you go.